Hey guys, Mr. McKinney here, just picking up our lesson on Riemann sums. Um, so in this portion of the video, we're going to be looking at how to calculate Riemann sums if you're given a table of values. I feel like this is the most common way that the AP exam asks about Riemann sums, so this is where I want to spend a majority of our time. So the question asks us to use the values in the table to approximate this definite integral with four intervals as indicated by the table. So we've got time values of 0 0.3, 1.7, 2.8, and 4. And then we've got velocity values at each of those times. Now, a side note is that we, if, if we integrate velocity, we're going to get distance. So this would tell me the distance traveled, or it would approximate the distance traveled. Now, we're going to do a left Riemann sum and a right Riemann sum first, which are both rectangles. So keep in mind that these are both rectangles. And then we'll do a trapezoid sum last. Now, for a rectangle, we need to know what the base and the height is. So let's get an idea of what this data table would look like if we plotted these points. So I'm just going to make a very rough scatter plot. So 0, 0, and then 0 0.3, 55, and then 1.7, 29, and then 2.8, we're up to 75, and then my last point, we're down here at 448. So it's going up, down, up, down. Now, let's look at whether we do a left Riemann sum or a right Riemann sum, how we calculate those differently. And then we'll look at a trapezoid sum last. We're calculating rectangles for these first two. And a rectangle is always base times height. The height for each of these rectangles is going to come from the velocity value. So my velocity is going to be the height. The width of each interval is going to be the base. And it's not the same. So these are not equal subintervals. The first interval goes from 0 to 0.3. So that's a width of 0.3. The next interval goes from 0.3 to 1.7. So if I subtract those, that's a width of 1.4, or the base is 1.4. From 1.7 to 2.8, we've got a width or a base of 1.1. And then from 2.8 to 4, we've got a base of 1.2. So the width of these rectangles is going to be the same whether I do a left sum or a right sum. So I'm going to put those widths down at the bottom. Now for a left sum, which I'll be doing in yellow here, the left sum, I'm going to use the point on the left side to draw each rectangle. So the first rectangle, I'd be drawing from the point on the left. For the second interval, I'm going to take the point on the left and draw a rectangle. For the, I'm going to leave it not colored in. For the third interval, I'm going to use the point that's on the left. And then for the last interval, I'm going to use the point that's on the left. So I've created four different rectangles. One of them is not really a rectangle because the height on the left side of this first rectangle is zero. So I'm going to label them as two, three, and four. This one that we can't really see is one. So each rectangle, as I try to calculate this Riemann sum using a left, or this definite integral using a left Riemann sum, I'm going to be adding up four rectangles. So I'm going to take the base of each rectangle times the height of each rectangle. So for the first one, I'm going to be doing 0.3, because that's how wide the first interval is, times the point that is on the left, which was 0. And then I'm going to take 1.4, because that's how far the first, or sorry, the second interval, how far apart the x values are, in this case the t values, times the height on the left, which would be 55. And then the third rectangle, the width or the base is 1.1. And I'm using the height that's on the left side, which is 29. And then the last interval has a width of 1.2 and a height on the left side of 75. So this last height of 48 does not get used in a left Riemann sum because we're using the left value for each rectangle. So this would represent the area of rectangle 1, which you can't see. This would be rectangle 2, rectangle 3, and rectangle 4. 
Now, if this was on a non-calculator free response, I could just box this. If it was on the calculator, then I'd want to type it into my calculator to get a value. In this case, if I type that all in, I should get 198.9. And then let's think about the units. So the base is hours. The height is meters per hour. So if I take meters per hour and I multiply them times hours, the hours will cancel out. So my answer is going to be in meters. Again, the integral of velocity is going to be distance. Now for part B here, I'm gonna to switch to red. It's the same concept, so we're gonna do a bunch of rectangles, but this time we're gonna use the point that's on the right side to draw my rectangle. So I've got the same five points, the same four intervals, but I'm gonna draw different rectangles. So for the first rectangle, I'm gonna use the point that's on the right side. So here's rectangle one. The second rectangle, again, I'm gonna use the point on the right side. The third rectangle would go all the way down, so that would include this yellow part as well. And then the last rectangle, I use the point that's on the right, and so it would be down here. The width of my rectangles has not changed. So I'm gonna have 0.3 times something plus 1.4 times something plus 1.1 times something plus 1.2 times something. Because again, the width of each of these intervals did not change. Instead of doing 0.3 times zero, which was the point on the left, I'm gonna do 0.3 times 55 which is the point on the right. And then I'm gonna do 1.4 times 29. And then I'm gonna do 1.1 times the point that's on the right, which is 75. And then I'm gonna do 1.2 times the last point, which is 48. And again, I'm just gonna put it all into my calculator, add it up, and I'd get 197.2. And again, the units are gonna be meters. So 197.2. Now, for part C, and I'll switch to white for this one. For a trapezoid sum, if you've already done a left and right ream on sum, you can just average those together. So since we've done these two, I could just add these two together. Um, but I think it'll help conceptually understand what's going on if we work through this one all the way. So for part C, instead of rectangles, we're doing trapezoid sums for this one. So I'm gonna use this and this endpoint to draw my first trapezoid. Now this first trapezoid is really a triangle. The rest of them will be actual trapezoids. So for trapezoid two, it's gonna look like this. And again, remember our trapezoids are on their sides. Trapezoid three would look like this, and trapezoid four would look like this. So one, and then two, and then three, and then four. Now, again, the formula for a trapezoid is not just base times height. It's one half times the two bases added together times the height. Now, again, these trapezoids are on their sides. So the height is really the base when we were thinking about the rectangles. So 0 0.3, 1.4, 1.1, and 1.2, these are heights for my trapezoids. And then the sides are gonna become like B1 and B2, or B1 and B2 for this one. So for the first trapezoid, I'd have one half times the average of the two heights, or the average of the two bases, so zero plus 55, one half times zero plus 55, that's the average of the two bases, times the height of the trapezoid, which is in this case the width in between them, so times 0.3. Plus one half times, I'm gonna add the next two bases together. And again, bases and heights get kind of confusing when we think about these trapezoids because they're on their sides. But I'm doing the distance times the average of the bases. So one half times those is the average of the bases. One half times these next two, 29 plus 75, times that height for that trapezoid. And then the last one, I'll 
I'll add together the last two values times the last height. And again, it's the height of a trapezoid, which is really like the base of a rectangle. I know it gets confusing. Now, this will give me the same answer as if I had just added these together and divided by 2, which should be 198.05 meters. So for a left Riemann sum, you won't use the rightmost point. For a right Riemann sum, you won't use the leftmost point. For a trapezoid point, you'll use all of the points. You'll use all the middle ones twice, and you'll use the outside ones once each. Um, hope this was helpful. I know Riemann sums can get a little bit confusing, um, so hopefully these videos are helpful, and then we can follow up in class. Have a great day.